I'm building my ruler now. You need to start with a design. And what I did is I just searched for a ruler, a metric ruler. I'm ignoring the inches. I'm making the centimeter ruler here. I'm only going to go up to 10. So a lot of these rulers go past 10. I'm going to stop right at 10. And I don't think I've scaled the big part of my ruler. I think it's too long, but I'll worry about that later. It's up to you where you want to put your uh, pivot point. I left a pivot here at the origin and then I built my ruler. If you look at the overhead view at this zoom level, the grid is going 10 millimeters at a time or one centimeter. So my ruler is going to end right over here, right around 10. I have a cube in here. I'm zooming way in and you can see the standard one millimeter grid. And as you zoom out a little further, it kind of groups it into 10 by 10 blocks, which is nice in the metric system. A great reason to work in the metric system is things work by tens. So you see 10 millimeters is one centimeter. So if you zoom to this level, the grid's actually in centimeters or 10 millimeters at a time. I have this cube here just so you can see uh, the standard cube in scale compared to what I'm building is quite a bit bigger. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete that cube. One other thing I did, normally when you start this up, you have everything is grouped into one collection. And I wanted to hide the camera and the light because I'm going to be creating a lot of objects. So what I did is I built another collection. That's very easy to do. Just right click anywhere in the blank space and go new collection. Uh, oops, I think I built a collection inside of a collection. You can delete that. Uh, new collection and I called it ruler, but you can call it whatever you want. F2 to name it. Uh, go ahead and delete that. So here's my collection where I got all my cubes. Uh, you could build, so I built my little markers as cylinders. If you look at a ruler, they're actually painted on. Um, and we are not going to cover how to paint uh, anytime soon. So it's not, a, if you want, you can make these, uh, make some materials that are black on here, but I just use cylinders. You could use uh, cubes that are scaled to represent these vertical lines here. So all I've done so far is I created one cylinder, put it here. I duplicated it four times right here. And the last time I duplicated, I made it a little bit longer. Uh, I primarily use the numbers here to adjust the positions. And when I move them, uh, you know, G is move, X fixes the axis, and then you could press a number five or four or three. I'm pressing delete or two or one. That's how I did most of my layouts here uh, in terms of spacing. And if you do look right here on the top, you can pretty clearly see that um, they're spaced out one millimeter apart. You can also look at the location value right here. The X coordinate goes from one to two to three to four to five. The next thing I want to do is, so I created the first five, I want to create the next five. And so we know shift D is duplicate, but I don't think you've seen, uh, I'm holding out control to select multiple here. And again, I'm in uh, object mode, not edit mode. All right, hold down shift to select multiple. You can duplicate lots of objects at one time, shift D, and then you can move them over. And of course you're going to press I align mine to the X axis right here, but I want to make this precise. So I'll just try, if I just do one like I did before, that's obviously not shifting far enough to the right. So for me, I'm shifting five right there, hit enter to apply it. Now I need to make this last one a little bit longer right here. And if you look, it's bold. So it needs to be, the cylinder needs to be a little bit thicker as well. And so I'm going to go and play around in the scale, uh, or you can play around the dimensions. Do make sure you apply the scale. So it looks like I scaled the Z a little bit and didn't apply it. So it's control, click on the object. Control A is to apply. I'm going to apply the scale and you'll see the scale turns into one, 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 the standard scale. And then these dimensions don't change. I'm going to make this one a little bit thicker in the 
let's see, I can do the scale. You can also multiply here. So I'm gonna go times 1.25. So you can do arithmetic here. You can add 0.25, however you want to accomplish that. So that just made it a little bit thicker. I'll make it a little bit longer times 1.25. Oh, that's a funky number. Let's go 1.3 right there. Now I do need to shift this up. You can try to eyeball it, but you're never of course going to get it exact. You can change your origin and turn on snapping is one way to get this lined up perfectly. You can also look right here. I'll just try five. That's not big enough. I think if I choose a better number here, this will be easier, but Point one, so you can play around with this, carefully changing it a little bit at a time, maybe 5.2, all right. There's also something you're gonna notice here when you do have these lined up, so now this is lined up perfectly flush, just like the other ones are. You're gonna notice something weird is happening because there is a mesh and a second mesh, and they are both lined up these faces, this little circle face and this big rectangle face are lined up exactly on top of each other. And so the rendering doesn't know which one to render on top. Just don't worry about that now. In the future, we'll combine these meshes in a nice way. If you're really, really annoyed by that, uh, one thing you can do is just shift on the Y axis, 4.01, just, just a tiny shift up and I'll zoom way in so you can see what that actually did. It pushed the cylinder back a little bit. So these the circle face is not parallel with, or it's not on the same plane as this big rectangle face. And therefore you don't get that weird little artifact that you can see on all the others. Um, I don't mind that artifact at all. Um, so for me, it's totally okay. Later on, we'll actually merge these. So it'll basically delete the bottom half of the cylinder and make this one proper 3D object. But for now, just deal with it. You can do wire uh, view if you want. And at least for this, for me, it was better to do it without the transparent or without the X-ray vision on. Uh, but I found that these other views are not great because, well, if you adjusted your light, this one would be okay, but this uses the actual light and renders it. It's going to take a lot more uh, graphics processing if you're going to work like this. This is more of like a flat shading right here. Um, it uses the material, which we don't cover, so I would stick to the standard shading right here, and it just sol uses solid shading, and it'll probably be faster on your uh, computer. You don't need to put the numbers in. Uh, there should be a one here, but I'm gonna skip that. But if you look, I now have things laid out nicely, just like the ruler here from zero to one centimeter with each of the millimeters marked. And you can see that the fifth and the 10th are bigger. And I showed you how to copy multiple or duplicate multiple things. You can, of course, uh, go here in the uh, collection now I did hide the uh, camera, the camera, the light you can see now, you can hide them if you want. So you can just toggle visibility here off and I'm gonna hide the original collection. If you notice, this is called cube, which is that big uh, ruler right there. Um, you can of course rename all of these. I'll just call this ruler body. Of course I have the caps, caps lock on like that. And that way I can really quickly tell that these are all cylinders and that's the ruler body. Uh, I'm okay with calling them all cylinders. If you want to call this one a little bit different because it's a little bit bigger, uh, you can feel free to name these slightly differently. It doesn't matter to me. You're going to have, when I'm done with this, there's going to be a ton of cylinders in here. And how did I just select all those? Well, you can click on one, you can press control. I'm holding down control and selecting as many as I want. There's a faster way to do this. This works also as a general Windows, uh, and I think it works on Mac too when you want to select multiple files. You select the first one in the regular way, just left click, hold down shift, click on the bottom one, and that'll select all of them. So that's one nice way to select multiple objects. 
And of course you can hold down shift and select or deselect. Now oh, you deselect with, no. All right, you don't deselect with control. But anyways, you can select what you want. And if you select too much, uh, let's see. I'm not sure how to deselect just one item. All right, so anyways, you can select these, duplicate, and you can keep duplicating bigger and bigger selections until you have laid out your whole ruler. You can definitely go past 10 if you want to, but 10 is the minimum uh, in order to get credit on this lab.